Hello, good day and welcome to the webinar uh, Impact of Electrical Noise on PLC Communications in which we will visit the experience of a Latin American city and a European city. I'm Ivonne Rechalde, Digital Lab Services Director at Technalia. In our digital laboratories, we provide services for the certification of different kinds of products, including those that use the power line communications. And we develop projects that help to deploy these technologies. The projects related to the noise in PLC communications merge our expertise in the technologies and our knowledge in the electromagnetic environment. This webinar is mainly aimed at uh, distribution system operators, DSOs that are developing or thinking in developed projects with PLC technologies. It is also recommended for smart meter manufacturers, smart meter consultants, and electrical grid maintenance service providers. The examples shown in this webinar are taken from problems in the deployment of smart meters using power line communications. Both of the conclusions can be extended for other uses of PLC technologies using frequencies under 500 kilohertz. Uh, we will show in this webinar a methodology focused on mapping electrical grid noise. We will show the results of a study based on this methodology, and we will compare the electrical noise of a city in Latin America and a city in Europe. The webinar will last 30 minutes approximately, and after it, we will give a pass to questions and answers. From this moment, uh, you have available the question chat in the panel on the right. Uh, you can write questions during the webinar to answer them at the end of it. The webinar will be recorded, so if anyone has connection problems, don't worry, uh, we, we, you will be able to retrieve the, the content later. Um, finally, uh, in this introduction, I only have to introduce our panelists for today. He is Oriol Munet, and the Director of Interna Internationalization of Technology Laboratories. Uh, Oriol is a person with more than 20 years of experience who has participated in large-scale projects in Europe, in Middle East and in Latin America. Uh, given his contacts with utilities around the world, he knows well how the smart meter deployment projects are usually approached and what deficits tend to be in planning those projects. I think that really you will enjoy this presentation from Oriol. So, Oriol, uh, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you for this uh, nice presentation. Uh, my name is Oriol Munne, and uh, let me share the presentation. Here it goes. It for sure, will help me in this presentation. Okay, hello everyone and welcome to this new webinar entitled Impact of Electrical Noises on PLC Communication Experiences in Latin America and an EU City. This is a new installment related to the problems suffered by the PLC communications of AME systems in the presence of electrical noises. We have structured the content of the webinar in these uh, four sections that you see here. First of all, we will make a short introduction where we will emphasize how electrical noises affect the communication of smart meters with PLC technology. Next, we will explain what we can do to minimize these problems. We will continue in the next chapter in which we will introduce you to a study aimed at developing a map of electrical noises using noisic technology, and we will offer you the results of an experience carried out in both a Latin America and a European city, where we will report to you not only the results, but also the differences registered. We will close the webinar with some general conclusions. And finally, we will open a uh, question time to be able to answer all the doubts and comments that may arise during the webinar. So, OK, let's get started with this uh, first chapter. Despite the multiple advantages that PLC systems offer in AME projects, it is common to find problems related to the communication of smart meters that, of course, can cause great headaches 
uh, for DSOs and relevant economic losses. These problems are not, in fact, very different from those caused by other technologies, like, for instance, the radio frequency technologies. Although in that case, the responsibility for the correct use of the system may fall on regulators or telecommunication operators, while in the case of the PLC, the responsibility for the maintenance of the system, it will always fall on the distribution companies. The main factors that can affect this communication, uh, this communication are mainly three, the ones you see here. First, the attenuation, closely linked to the type and distance of the cables. The impedance changes that may occur. And last but not least, the, electrical, um, the, the presence uh, of electrical noises. We're going to dedicate a little time to explain in a very simple way how electrical noises can block the communication of our PLC smart meters. As you may all know, within an electrical system, we can differentiate four different stages or activities. Generation, in charge of producing the energy necessary to satisfy consumption. Transportation or transmission, which allows the energy uh, produced to be transferred to the consumption centers. Distribution, which makes it possible for energy to reach the last stage, which of course are the end uses. Thus, the small grids are basically electrical distribution um, networks combined with modern information and communication technologies, which provide data to both electricity distribution companies and consumers. The advanced metering infrastructure are part of this smart grid concept and in which the two com the two way communication between utilities and customers, it's, it's one of the, the most relevant things. Thus, to obtain data, bilateral communication are generated between the head and system, the data concentrator, and the smart meters of the end users. In this slide, we see the flow of communications between the end user and the head and system. Sometimes, as you see here on the top, when one of the users employs and control electrical devices that by its nature, for instance, I don't know, an old TV, uh, generates high amount of electrical noises, these noises move through the smart meters, affecting not only this meter, but also those that may be nearby. When the noises are of high intensity and also overlap with the frequency band that the meters use to communicate, they interfere in such a way that communication is blocked, affecting a whole series of meters. That logically affects the basic principles expected on an AME system. Let's see with this simple example how communication can be affected by electrical noise. In this first case, we see the frequency band used by a smart meter. When our network presents noises, we can find ourselves in this first case, where the frequency at which the noises are produced does not overlap the band used by the meter. Thus, in this case, the noises will not affect the correct operation of the meter. However, on the contrary, in this second situation, we see how frequency of the noises does overlap or almost with the frequency band of our meters, with which we could expect some errors in the communication process. What happens when we have a series of meters affected by electrical noise? In fact, the AME system does not fulfill its mission, and therefore the DSO will have difficulties to comply with the commitments required by the regulation, either due to a lack of availability of the measures or due to delay in their shipment, which generates, of course, additional costs that precisely an AME system is intended to avoid. And not only that, but the DSO will lose valuable data that would allow it to make decisions. Finally, in such a situation, the electricity companies will have to bear extra costs related to the installation of filters in those meters that generate the highest noise levels. Based on our experience, depending on the type and quality of network, we find that the percentage of meters that can be affected by electrical noise can range from 1-2% um, to more than 20%. Of 
course, in extreme cases. If we take into account the number of meters that are massively deployed in a rollout, we will see that the magnitude of the problem can be dramatic and very costly and could even affect the feasibility of the investment in an AME system. Now let's move into the second chapter in what can we do to minimize these problems. So it seems reasonable that if our network has serious noise problems, the use of PLC technology may be questionable. Considering the advantages that the PLC presents, and if we have decided to bet on PLC, a sensible, but I would say not usual, way to approach this situation would be to correctly choose the available communication technology, the, the open standards, uh, since there are cases available that allow choosing different frequency bands or the band used is wide enough to overcome the problem of noise. Taking into account the distribution of noise over time, which might which we might uh, see differences, we could configure the system so that remote readings take place at the most favorable hours of the day. Of course, this is where less noise appear. Finally, when we no longer have room for any other option, we will have no alternative but, but to manually introduce noise filters where the highest incidence, incidence are recorded, which will generate, of course, an additional cost. If we could know what type of electrical noise affects our network, we would certainly have the capacity to make decisions that are very relevant to our AME project. This is where the idea of making electrical noise maps was born. Generating these maps will help us from the outset to analyze at least whether the problems due to noise will be specific or common. Regarding the design of an AAMIS project, the noise maps will allow the utility to know if the PLC uh, technology is adequate or if we need to look for alternatives. We will also know in which frequency bands we will have fewer communication problems and also at what time of the day is it better to communicate. In fact, uh, AME systems that work with other techn technologies like 2G, 3G or even 4G technology work in a very similar way. Although in this case, of course, noise maps would not be applicable, it is very common for the telecommunication operator to make signal coverage maps to anticipate communication problems. So Technalia and some, uh, along with some electricity companies, already carried out electrical noise maps as a standardized practice in their a &E projects. On this occasion, we want to show you the results of some experience carried out in a Latin American and European city. To be able to make noise maps, we will first need a frequency spectrum analyzer. Here, we can opt for a traditional equipment, or in this case, a rather new one, a rather, it's a device called Noisic that uh, we will comment on later. And how should we proceed? Then we will have to define the geographical area to, of the study and then carry out the noise measurements. And with all the collected data, we'll have to process it in order to obtain results and of course, draw conclusions. Let's, let's quickly see the main differences between a traditional frequency spectrum analyzer and the noisy device developed by Technalia. Although is it true that traditional equipment has many more functionalities uh, and that noisy only focuses on the capture of noise data, the cost is not comparable. This is very relevant, especially if we want to make noise maps quickly and covering a large surface because we will need several equipment operating at the same time. Other clear advantages of Noisic are that it's, that it's a very robust equipment, ideal for working in harsh environments. It does not require great knowledge for its use, and it is very easy to install. In addition, Noisic is accompanied by a, an exclusive APP that allows data to be introduced and to be processed in a very simple way and to obtain graphs that facilitate the understanding and the interpretation of results. 
So let's now go on, let's now go to the to show you the the study carried out. The fundamental objective uh, is to be able to compare the noises present in the electrical network of a Latin America city and an European one in order to determine not only if in both places the PLC technology is adequate, but if there are differences in terms of the frequencies in which noises are manifested that consequently may cause greater risks of communication failure. Another aspect we wanted to evaluate is if there are hours of the day when apparently the noise level is lower and therefore could be used to communicate. A second big uh, objective is also to um, regarding, uh, we wanted to validate the noisy uh, equipment and uh, to carry out this study. We used this equipment and we wanted to validate it, taking, taking into account the advantages that we previously saw. So let's see below the methodology that we have uh, followed in this study. First, uh, we selected two locations, one from a country in Latin America and the other a European capital. In the first case, uh, 96 points were sampled, while in the European case, seven secondary substations were monitored, where there are dozens of smart meters connected to each of them. The range of uh, frequencies of the study goes from 32 up to 490 kilohertz. Regarding the duration of the records, there were certain differences. In the Latin American case, the average of the recordings, of the recordings was around two hours, while in the European case, it lasted up to a week. Of course, it is interesting for us to see how much monitoring time we need to obtain the most reliable results possible, which will have an impact on the feasibility of carrying out this type of study in the future. Finally, uh, as regards uh, the data processing and in accordance with the objectives set, the data were processed to determine the distribution of noise over time and the distribution of noise by frequency. In this slide, you can see where the measurement points are located through a geolocation system. As you can see, the measurements correspond to mainly to residential areas. In this other slide, uh, the same information is shown, but this is the case of the Latin America locality. Uh, and well, due to confidentiality issues, we are not allowed to give more details about this geographic information. The equipment used, as said before, to record the noises is noisic. This equipment uh, was developed and patented by Technalia. This technology is used by Technalia to make no noise maps when electricity companies ask us for these jobs but we also license it to third parties so that they can perform or provide these same services autonomously or semi-autonomously. Here you can see in detail the technical features of, or the main technical features of this, of this equipment. Then um, for data processing, as I said before, uh, we used an APP designed and also developed by Technalia that allows the large amount of recorded data to be managed very quickly and very efficiently and displayed to the user in a graphical way that is very intuitive and easy to understand. So continuing with the objectives we set for ourselves, we process the noise records to obtain the graph that you see on this slide. In this case, it is a question of seeing the distribution of noises over time. In this example, you can see the peaks and valleys um, very clearly. You know? It is understood that in the period of time that we find valleys, uh, communication should be optimal. Uh, so continuing with this example, in this case, it would be more appropriate to schedule the readings at night than uh, during the day. Uh? In this other case, the recorded noise data is processed with the APP to obtain the noise distribution by frequency. In a similar way as in the previous case, those frequencies that present peaks, that is high noise levels, will represent a greater risk in communication, as long as they overlap, of course, with the frequency in which our smart meters communicate. So continuing uh, with the previous examples, 
and so that you can see the importance of knowing the frequencies in which there is a great incidence of noise, I want to show you this slide. As you can see above, we have considered the main open communication standards accessible in the current market. You can see here meters and more, prime or G3 PLC. Uh, in the noise frequency graph, we can see in which bands each of the open standard works. So, for instance, here you can see meters and more. This would be prime 1.3.6, G3 PLC in the Senelec A version. Here we see also G3 PLC with the FCC version. And, and finally, we, have, we see here the eight channels, the frequency channels bands, eight in fact, uh, that Prime 1.4 allowed us to choose. So in the noise frequency graph, um, by combining this information, uh, both, uh, we could find out which technology may have the lowest risk of communication failure. So let's go, let's go with, re with the results eh, once we have seen the methodology. These are the graphs uh, with the noise distribution means over time. Although we see many lines here, it's true that we do observe, we do observe some differences. From the outset, the noise level is significantly higher um, in the case of um, on, on, in the case of the uh, Latin America city than in the case of the European city. Then. Although there are some registers where different patterns are seen, like this one here, for instance, it's true uh, that well, the reality shows us that these patterns do not appear in a generalized way. And therefore, it is difficult to say at what time it is better to communicate with the smart meters generally. So we feel that this information can be especially useful if we have communication problems in specific areas. When, when we deal in that cases, we think that this is valuable because it will be then when we will look at each specific case and see at which time of the day we uh, presumably will have less failures in, uh, in communication problems. In the results by frequency distribution that you can see here, we could reach more general about generalizable uh, conclusions. As you can see, we have distributed the frequency band in eight different channels that in fact coincide with the channels used by the prime 1.4 technology. This segmentation allows us to more easily interpret the results and better identify the differences. That's why we use it. So in this specific case, we see the results obtained in Latin America. The yellow or orange columns um, correspond to the noise peaks recorded while the blue columns in the front correspond to the mean values of the noise recorded at all sampling points. Taking into account the noise level, we are able to identify those bands where the risk of having communication problems is higher, medium or low. So note that in the first frequency band that goes from 41 to 89 kilohertz is where uh, we are most at risk. By chance, this is the band that uses, in fact, meters and more, prime 1.3.6 and G3 PLC in the Senelec A version. So based on these results, if we could choose, we would apply for prime 1.4 or G3 PLC in the FCC version. Let us now see what happens in the European case. Well, here, um, in this case, from the outset, we also see that the intensity of the noises, both in peaks and in average values, is somewhat lower than in the case of la the la Latin American city. Regarding the distribution of these in the frequency band studied, we see some similarity with the case of Latin America. The first frequency band also seems the most unfavorable or the one with the greatest risks while there are three bands that apparently present very favorable values. As in the case studied in Latino America, the last channel seems to be the one with the least presence of noise. We could uh, therefore say that the more advanced versions of Prime 1.4 and G3 PLC could work well, 
minimizing the incidence of communication due to the noise. So at this point, uh, we can identify some relevant conclusions uh, and OK, let's go. Let's go for them. In the view of uh, there you are, sorry, in the view of results, firstly, we could conclude that electrical noise maps can be very useful tools, not only for the design and technical specification process of an AME projects, but also to optimize and gain efficiency in the communication of a system already deployed. Perhaps the most valuable thing that noise maps offer us is to determine the frequency bands that carry the least risk of suffering inefficiencies or lack of communication in smart meters. This optimization will result in a reduction of unforeseen costs and therefore increasing or at least maintaining the expected economic viability of the AME projects as a whole. On the contrary, the determination of the presence of incent and intensity of noise over time has less operational value in massive studies due to the lack of general patterns within a steady area. This functionality of noise maps can have value in specific areas. In these locations, knowing the noise patterns throughout the day can help, uh, of course, in, in making small adjustments in the time of the day that the smart meters should communicate. This study has also made it possible to validate the noisy technology and in particular its operational and technical advantage of the traditional equipment such as frequency spectrum analyzers. Regarding the data obtained in the two cities studied, we can conclude that in the Latin American case, the intensity of electrical noise was significantly higher than in the case of the European city studied. This would lead us to think that in the Latin American city, we could have greater risks of suffering communication problems due to the incidence of electrical noise. However, analyzing the distribution of noise by frequency, we can conclude that in both cities, there are frequency bands where set risk would be low and therefore PLC technology would work properly. It is, it is also worth noting in light of the results that the frequency band ranging from 41 to 89 kilohertz, which is where the usual technologies or open standards work, such as the ones we said, meters and more, prime 136 and G3 PLC, is the one with the worst expected behavior and where we find the greatest risks. So it would be recommended in both cases to opt for the most current versions of Prime 1.4 and G3 PLC, which allow working the frequency bands identified as most favorable. And with uh, this, we would end the presentation of this webinar. So um, thank you very much uh, for your attention. And if it's OK for you, uh, I will give the word back to my colleagues so that they can read and answer all the questions that you have uh, been written during the webinar in our chat box. So from my side, uh, once again, thank you. Um, thank you very much, Oriol. Uh, thank you for the, for the presentation. Really, really very interesting. Um, I remind to all the people that is in the, in the other side uh, that you have in, on the right part, uh, you have a panel and, and you can click in, in, in questions because um, really uh, here you, you can ask, uh, ask all, the, all the questions that you have. Okay, um, I see five questions, sorry all. Uh, so I will, well, I will start with the first one that is only uh, clarification of the slide uh, 30. I will try to put on the screen. Okay, this is slide 30. Uh, I will uh, share. I, I think that you, you already already see the, the 30. Uh, it's asking. Uh, for and related to the color lines uh, of the different uh, 
uh, well, the different graphics that we see and the, and the color lines which are representing these, these different colors. Um, well, really, I don't know if you want to answer Oriol or me because yes. it's the same. It's very easy. Well, yeah, in, in, in that in that slide, uh, we uh, were placing in which frequency bands the different open standards that are available work uh, in the different, yeah. In, so at the end, the, the intention of that slide, which I really liked, is that you can, um, you can see very clearly in which frequency bands the different open standards available work so that comparing the results of the, of the di distribution uh, on frequency of the results, you can very easily see which uh, of these open standards could lead to minimize the noise problems in case that, of course, uh, they are present and they are, of course, overlapping the frequency bands of the different standards. So at the end, uh, this slide for me it was very interesting because you could see very easily where you are and which open standard could be the best one to use. Yes. Well, uh, and the and the colors that you see, the lines that you see here represent each one is one point uh, of measurement. Uh, if uh, and 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 you can see well, the evolution along the, the the different hours on the day. So different colors are different points of measurement. Uh, so you can you can yes. see also uh, uh, these, these different meters. Uh, as a matter of fact, Ivan, I, I, I'm, I'm not seeing the, the slide. Oh? No, sorry. Not, not, uh, not me. That's why I ah, just, okay. just had to me memorize a little bit which was <laughs> that. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's this one. Ah, okay. I yeah. thought it was number 30 and I had mm -hmm. another, another number in my mind. Yes, this is the evolution of the time, and of course, these are the different lines. The, the different lines represent uh, the different spots that were registered in the study, and, and this is the, the noise levels uh, distributed over time. No? And I was saying mm -hmm. that, as you see here, there are, there are lines which are very short, and, and this means that here the recording has been done only for a few hours yeah? and mm -hmm. I think I didn't say that uh, very clear in the conclusions but one of the conclusions is that for an optimal um, uh, yeah for, for, for obtaining um, the results and to obtain reliable data um, what what we concluded is that at least you should uh, record uh, during 24 hours to see very clear the patterns along the day because what we uh, concluded is that um, recording uh, in less than 24 hours you could miss some uh, valuable information about the behavior of these noises over time. No? So one mm -hmm. of the conclusions, what, what it would be best actually is to record for over one week because you could also see differences between weekends and, and working days, where sometimes, uh, from based from our experience, we also saw some differences. Huh? So, mm -hmm. well, um, this would be, uh, yeah, the answer at least um, in terms of the conclusions we we uh, <coughs> obtained from this picture. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Oriol. Um, well, the, the second question I will answer directly. Uh, it says, uh, thank you all for the presentation, it was very interesting. We started the massive rollout of our AME system in 2019 and we noticed uh, some problems with the communications and we think this could be due to electrical noises. We work with D3PLC, do you think it would be useful and was to perform a noise map in our situation? Uh, thanks. Okay. Uh, I, I will share uh, just the, uh, the slide uh, where you were presenting the, the, well, the different channels used by the different technologies. Um, this, uh, 
this this uh, yeah. to to that was the one I was I was commenting before. <laughs> yeah, uh, I share this because really well, uh, the question mentions uh, GCPLC, but the GCPLC also have uh, they have uh, two options uh, that is the CLK band or the FCC band. Uh, really well uh, related to the question, uh, uh, of course, is is useful to to use uh, this noise mapping uh, when you have problems because you can detect where the problems are exactly. Uh, so uh, it's not the same, of course, if you use uh, U3PLC or if you use uh, the FCC band. Uh, so uh, FCC band because really. They are using totally different frequencies, and and the noises can be uh, well. We, we know from the different projects with CNLK band, not, not only GCPLC, but also Prime One, Three Doxies, and and meters more. That this is a band with a lot of noises. So so really, the problem could be there. And and of course, if you have an option like GCPLC, where you can select two options, or you have a, a the technology like Prime 1.4, where you can choose between eight options. Uh, the best is to make this uh, noise mapping to, to understand with, which is the best channel for the communications. Uh, this can be done once you have the problems, but of course, if you are planning a project, it's very good if you can uh, apply previously to understand your environment previously to the plan. Yeah. What, what I would add, uh, Yvonne, if I may, mm -hmm. is that yeah. if you have already um, uh, conducting the massive rollout, and if you have the G3 PLC SNLK uh, version, um, what I would say is that yes, uh, noise mapping could be useful, but um, in a different way. That uh, in that if you are facing to start an AME project, no? Because uh, what I would say is that if you already deployed the meters, if you have noticed uh, some possible uh, noise problems there, uh, the difference would be that in the methodology um, that we would suggest would be not to include all uh, a big area, a big geographical area, but this area should be restricted in those places where we feel that there are more problems due to electrical noises. So I would say that it's useful to do these electrical noises in a restricted area where the problems are. And from the conclusions, we could opt for installing filters or maybe in future purchases of new smart meters to start changing to the new version of G3 PLC so that uh, we could escape very probably to those um, uh, noise problems if the results show that, of course, the frequency bands of those noises are out of the scope of the frequency band of the new uh, G3 PLC version. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I will pass to the third question, Oriol. Uh, is there a way to have the noisy devices and perform the noise maps by our own? Uh, we are not based in Spain, so we would like to explore this option. Uh, can you explain how could we do so? Yes, indeed. Um, well, um, of course, Technalia offers this service, so anyone that is interested in conducting a noise map in the region uh, you're free to ask us and we could do this uh, job for you. But yes, there are some other options. And in fact, um, we have some examples in which we license this technology. And by licensing this technology, um, there are two ways of working. One, uh, by its own. This means that we license, we give some noisy devices, we train them. We give also some license to use the APP for the data processing. And after this training, uh, the company can offer these services to third parties, or in some cases, we have some DSOs that they have this technology by, by, by its own, and they do this kind of internal studies uh, to learn more about the grid they're working with. 
but there is also a, a mixed version in which uh, there are some other examples in which we send these devices, they take the data by their own, and then uh, we process this data and we send a report of the results and so on. So that could be also a mixed model. So as you see, it's a case by case, uh, we can establish a sort of uh, yeah, way of promoting these services. Okay, thank you. The fourth question is, say, is it mandatory to use both the noisy devices and the noisy app for conducting the noise maps? Uh, I, I, I will answer directly. Uh, as Oriol has explained it just now with the different models of, uh, of use, uh, you can understand that uh, it's not uh, necessary to, to, to use the two things. Really, the noise app is an improvement to make uh, some analysis very, very fast and, and, and to understand graphically the, the, the problems. But really, you can take the data uh, that this is our structured data, the data taken by Noisic, and you can uh, elaborate your own uh, graphics or your own uh, reports using this data. So really are two things that are very, very easy to use in common, but can be uh, the, the noisy devices can be used by their own. Yeah, and, and, and I would add also that this methodology is valid using uh, traditional equipment of a spectrum analyzer. Huh? So uh, you could do it uh, without the use of Noisic, I would say. But indeed, it's true that uh, Noisic, it makes, it makes everything easier in, to obtain the results that we're looking for. No? And of course, there are some advantages uh, in using this technology as well. Yeah, and spectrum analyzer is a device that costs a lot and, and can be break uh, due to this kind of electrical noise. So really can be used by very carefully uh, because of that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, the last question, Oriol. Uh, for how long should we register and record the noises to obtain reliable data? Oh, I've mentioned yeah, well, I, I answered well. that uh, before in the in the slide that I was confused with the number of the slides because I didn't see it. <clears throat> but yes, um, as said, uh, I would say that uh, from our experience that at least 24 hours of recording, um, that, that should be ideally the minimum uh, time to, to record noises to obtain reliable data. Of course, that um, uh, if we increase this time up to uh, two, three, or even seven days, we would have a, a better vision, uh, a more complete um, vision of the results. However, it's true that we have to combine the cost of time. No, I mean, if, if the uh, geographical area is very wide, it's very big, um, you would need um, a number of noisics to perform this, this mapping at the same time or at least uh, reducing the time of the whole study. And of course, if you increase the time of recording, this enlarges the time of study. No? So uh, an equilibrium would be uh, to choose around 24 hours. It, would, it should be enough to get a picture of what's happening in our grid. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Oriol. Well, uh, we have finished the questions, uh, so Oriol, only uh, thank you very much for your presentation and, and your answers. Thank you very much all, also for all the people that has made the questions and, and for the audience that is on the other side. Uh, thank you. Um, we will sit together in the next webinars. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to all of you.